These are in listen only mode. Hello everyone. I'm Guy Patrick and I'd like to welcome you all to GeoEnviro Pro's webinar on the use of conceptual site models in site contaminate site assessment. Today's talk is going to be presented by Ryder Zabgilia, Scott Steer, and myself. Here's a, a lovely picture of us. Ryder's the, the, the gentleman on the left upper left hand side. Uh, I'm the I'm the one with the funny photograph on the upper right hand side. And Scott Steer, who will be talking about risk assessment in the conceptual site model, he's in the lower left. You'll also see other folks who are going to be um, assisting us in presenting a full set of webinars on uh, the fundamentals of site characterization, risk assessment, and, and remediation uh, later on in the year. Uh, a word about the webinar before we begin. We're going to go for about an hour. There should be time for a few questions, hopefully. If you have a question, please click on the question button on the right side of your screen, type it in, and we'll review them during the talk. And if we can't get to them during the talk, we'll get back to you at the end. A bit about GeoEnviro Pro. We're a small firm that started about 15 years ago in Vancouver. Our partners and almost all of our guest speakers are former or current consultants who share a passion for teaching and learning. We've all developed and taught courses at universities and colleges. And we know the challenges of gaining effective learning opportunities today for consultants out there and for folks in government and industry. So now I'd like to turn it over to Ryder and he can tell us a bit about uh, bit more about the webinar series that's coming up. Well, thanks, Guy. Uh, yeah, on this slide, you see the the program, and today is the is the first topic, and and that's on the conceptual site model. Uh, and then uh, the rest of the program we're going to deliver later in the, in the spring. Uh, we're going to start on April eleventh, and it finishes on June sixth. The um, the webinars are on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, one hour each. And uh, the time is uh, 9 to 10 Pacific Standard Time. And in, in Eastern Canada, that's the noon hour. Uh, topics that we're going to cover is uh, site investigation characterization for soil and for soil vapor and groundwater. And we're also going to cover uh, risk assessment for both ecological risks and human health. And then we have uh, two sessions on practical statistics, sort of applied statistics to um, site contamination and risk assessment. And we're going to finish off with uh, remediation, planning, design, common technologies and methods, and also monitor natural attenuation. For more information uh, about uh, the program and, uh, and to sign up, go to our website, GNRPro. Dot com. Uh, so now, uh, for the next slide, we have the conceptual site model, and uh, we're going to talk about how this conceptual site model is instrumental in, in uh, the entire sort of process of contaminated site investigation and remediation, how it helps us uh, with with design of sampling plans, uh, figuring out uh, exposure pathways for risk assessment, and selecting um, the best uh, remediation technologies. Uh, we're going to first start with the talking about legacy sites and sources of contamination. And then uh, briefly go over the investigation process, how to use the CSM, both for risk assessment, investigation, and, and remediation. So this site is, is in the infamous Love Canal site, which um, probably all of you have, have heard about. Uh, the um, William Love uh, dug a canal between the upper and lower Niagara River in, uh, in the 1900s. His plan was to build a power plant that could then power a small new development, a small village uh, in that area. It ended up never being built. Uh, instead, Hooker Chemical built a chemical plant there in the 1920s. They operated for, for 30 years. Uh, they ended up filling in the canal with waste material. 
with chemical waste. Uh, and in the 50s, when they closed the plant, they capped the, um, the landfill they had created with soil. And the property was sold to the city for a dollar. Uh, the city had plans to develop a, a subdivision there. And as you see on this picture, the, um, the subdivision had about 100 homes in that area and a school. And the school, as you see there, is located right on the banks of the Buried Canal. Uh, next guy. So in 1978, uh, it was a newspaper article, and I'll read it to you. Uh, 25 years after the Hooker Chemical Company stopped using uh, the Love Canal, as an industrial dump, 82 different compounds, 11 of them suspected carcinogens, have been percolating upward through the soil, their drum containers rotting and leaching their contents into the backyard and basements of 100 homes and a public school built on the banks of the canal. So it's pretty serious uh, uh, contamination issues. And next slide, uh, as you show, show here, next guy. Um, the uh, site was declared an emergency disaster area by President Jimmy Carter in 1977, and the residents were evacuated at the cost of 30 million. New York State sought $900 million in um, damages, and the settlement was $180 million. The remediation involved obviously demolishing the, the homes and the school and then capping the entire site and, and then controlling leachate, controlling and treating leachate, so preventing uh, aquatic uh, or risk to, to aquatic receptors in the canal, in the, in the river next to the canal. Uh, next, now why so toxic and why, why a big problem? Well, the, Toxicity has to do with the, the chemicals that are being produced. They were synthetic chemicals. They are soluble, volatile, persistent. Uh, and why such a big problem? Well, when you combine uh, the toxic chemicals with the exposure pathways, in this case, there was a buried canal, as you can see, in the middle of the green field running from the lower lower left out towards the river that prevented it that pr presented a preferential pathway for contaminants to get into the river and of course by placing homes on and school on top of of the landfill material you also created direct pathways into people's homes with vapors and and um, and so on so by combining um, Toxic chemicals with exposure to receptors, uh, it turned out to be a big problem. Next. Now, go to another example, and this is a Canadian one here in Vancouver. Uh, Falls Creek is located downtown Vancouver. It's a, it's a historical waterfront um, development where you had various industries operating from the 1880s to 1980s. It included sawmills, uh, wood treatment facilities, um, coal gasification plant in the upper right corner, uh, shipyards on the south shore. Um, and these operations, they all had wastes of various kinds. And the simplest thing was just to dump it uh, into, uh, into the water. And that way, uh, oftentimes, they also expanded the land base, uh, which was convenient. Of course, uh, as we know today, uh, it, it may it created a legacy for future development. So next slide. So shown here, this is a hundred years later. It's a totally different picture. Looks very pretty, uh, but it's taken a lot of effort to get it to that point. Uh, the um, uh, next slide. Uh, the what we have learned, of course, is from, first from Love Canal in the U.S. that led to the U.S. Superfund program, 
Uh, there was many other sites discovered later, and uh, and uh, Love Canal was sort of leading the way in the U.S. Uh, in Canada, uh, sites like Falls Creek on the west coast and the Sydney tar ponds on the east coast uh, also led the way in terms of um, developing Canadian regulations and guidance. So.